Hey, what's up guys? So, you know, in my previous videos, you've seen that I've ruptured my Achilles. But I thought I'd just go into a bit more detail of how I did it, because I didn't really go into detail properly last time. Um, and where I am in my journey and some tips that uh, might help you if you've ruptured your Achilles. So, today marks a month since I've, since I've ruptured mine. It's exactly four weeks. And not in any pain, I'm not taking any pain tabs. I take every now and then, like at night, if I'm in a bit of discomfort or I can't get comfortable, starts aching and throbbing, then I'll take one. But uh, generally, haven't really been taking any, which is good. Because the first week I was taking about three a day, which isn't too bad because the doctor prescribed me four a day. So pain-wise, it hasn't been too bad. But uh, let me tell you what happened. I was playing squash, which is like racquetball. It's very like stop, start, stop, start the whole time. and. Uh, it works on your joints a lot, works on your Achilles a lot. And you need that explosive power to like jump off the line and run for the ball. And we were five games in playing the second to last point. And we played it and the ball landed on the floor. And it wasn't even like I sprinted for the ball. I, I took a jog, but I leaped up in the air. Like I jumped a little bit higher than I should have, but I was doing like a jog. But I was also tired at the same time. And I think I was pushing very hard. And as I landed, I just took that step off and as I landed, Achilles just went. But uh, obviously, like, as you know, when you rupture your Achilles, if you've seen anybody else or if you've ruptured your Achilles, you think that someone's hit you from behind. So I looked behind, I thought the guy that I was playing with hit me with a squash racket and he wasn't even close to me. So as soon as that happened in my brain, I, I knew that something was wrong and I, I just knew that it was my Achilles. So I didn't stand on it. I, tried, I hobbled along and I, I just had no stability. It felt like the, the floorboards, as it snapped, it felt like the floorboards vibrated through my foot. It was a crazy sound. It sounded like a gunshot. And as it popped, like the floor felt like it was vibrating. It was, it was so intense. So hobbled off, got off the squash court and uh, just lay down. So we strapped it up, eventually got to the hospital but uh, I do think that I did a little bit too much that week. I, I don't think that it just ruptured because I was training relatively hard for the last four months. I've been training quite hard, but I think it was a buildup. I did four boxing sessions in the week. And now, if you know boxing on the heavy bag and sparring, you're on your toes a lot, you're using your calves a lot and your Achilles quite a bit. And then uh, I did a lot of weight training. And then the Thursday I did heavy calves. I did seated calves and it was pretty heavy. Um, so I think I just tore those muscle fibers quite significantly and probably the Achilles um, tendon took a lot of load and maybe felt a bit weak and then when I went to go play squash it was just like too much and uh, it just gave in. I also trained that same morning that I ruptured, I trained in the morning um, and then I did a bit of work so that week I think I just was on my feet so much and doing so many exercises and just working and everything that when I played squash and, and five games in is pretty hectic because uh, squash is not an easy game so you play like three games and you're feeling quite tired but we pushed and it was quite a competitive game so five games in I was really pushing myself and I wanted to win the game so I was pushing extra hard and uh, I think I just ignored the signs of being overtrained, feeling exhausted. So that's basically what happened to me. And uh, so I'm four weeks in now. Today's exactly four weeks that uh, I ruptured it. But uh, there's a few things that I've learned along the way. I know there's quite a few guys with different videos and uh, they all give tips, which is very helpful. I like watching everyone else's story because they've all got a few tips and tricks that really help me. And then I can improve and adjust certain things. The biggest thing that I've found, I got given crutches that uh, were straight from the hospital and I thought I was just not very well balanced on the crutches and I kept slipping. So they started bending, the, the little ferrules at the bottom of, bottom of the crutches were bending and going so skew and every time I'd, I'd bend them straight, as soon as I put my weight down on them, they'd bend and, and go skew again. And then whenever I was on a smooth surface, the crutches would slip out from me and there's been a few close calls where I almost stepped on my boot. That's very scary because you don't want to put any weight on this foot and, and cause a bigger tear. So finding the right crutches, I'd say, is important. So I've got these new ones. It's got a different ferrule at the bottom and it's much more stable. It doesn't bend. My other ones were bending so skew. 
Uh, also, the handle of this is angled a little bit upwards, so it forces your arm back into the, the back of the crutch here. So your, your forearm is resting at the back here, where the other one was straight and my arm was popping out. So I'd be walking and my arm would pop out and I'd be very unstable and the bottom was bending. So I've got these new crutches, the, the handles are angled up a little bit and the ferrules are more stable. So when you're given crutches, just make sure that they're right for you. Feel that they're stable. Um, ask about the weight limit. Obviously mine was the right weight limit, but uh, there was just a defect in manufacturing maybe. So finding the right crutches is critical. So these are my second pair. First ones are getting sent back. The second thing you need to do is definitely get yourself one of these bags. Moon bag, fanny pack, whatever you want to call it. Just to keep your phone, your wallet, any keys you need, might need for house keys. If you're leaving the house, going to your doctor's appointments, it's impossible to carry things with crutches. So um, just having a bag just to hold everything. I just put it around my chest and I've got my phone and everything right here. So it uh, works pretty well. And then just, uh, yeah, just keep your foot as elevated as, as much as possible. Everyone has different boots, but uh, I've got the air cast and this is pretty cool because you don't need a separate pump to pump it up everything's built in so you just change the valve right here and you pump it up pumps the left and the right and it's quite secure easy to take off and uh, definitely wear a sock with it because that boot gets so hot that uh, after three days you have to clean that whole thing out it doesn't smell so good so wearing a sock just helps with that also clean it out with soap and you get the whole velcro this whole velcro lining comes out so you can pull this whole thing out you can wash it um, we just do a, a light wash with soap and sanitizer just to get rid of the smell uh, you can put it in like do a, a hand wash but uh, it's gonna take quite a while to dry and uh, I don't feel safe walking around without the boot yet in case I slip or something happens at least in the boot I'm safer and I can like lightly tread on the boot but uh, not having the boot on I wouldn't feel safe so just clean it lightly and uh, yeah that's about it I've done my second physiotherapy session which is pretty early and pretty good so I'm getting a lot of range of motion I'm doing quite a few exercises and uh, that's helping the mobility of my ankle because my ankle is starting to get very stiff and very sore and uh, I've also gone to gym for the second time so I've taken it very easy um, not doing too crazy but we did chest and arms today and just taking it very slow like not lifting the weights that I was lifting before just to keep stable and build up but I do just want to get that strength in and uh, get my body in that anabolic state where I can just keep healing properly also my diet I've been eating very clean and uh, having a lot of juices having um, smoothies with vegetables in and lots of fruit and nuts and lemon just just to keep my body as healthy as I can and uh, just help it recover so uh, yeah that's my story up to now I'll keep you guys updated as the weeks go by but uh, I hope this helps you guys and I'll see you guys soon